Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use crosstabs to help you understand the relationship between two categorical variables. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of this data below. Crosstabs are an incredibly powerful tool for comparing the relationship between two categorical variables. They're not really appropriate for continuous variables, so we're not going to use those here. I want to jump right into it and run a crosstab that compares two things. One is modality one, which is what people report as their most frequent modality in watching YouTube. If we click into this little ellipse, we see that there's a few options, computer, tablet, smartphone, TV, other, and none. In a moment, I'm actually just going to restrict this to only be those first four options. Honestly, that's just to keep things simple. You can, of course, include everything if you want. The other variable I'm going to look at is gender which is down here. So gender is coded as one equals male, two equals female, three equals other. Again, just to keep this simple, I'm only gonna look at male and female. You can of course look at all the data. I'm just trying to keep this as an easy example for you. So to restrict those, I'm gonna use the select case tool, which I talk about in a different video, but I'll do it quickly here. So data, select cases, if, and I've already written the conditional, but I'll show you what it is. If I go into here, I'm saying exclude gender, so don't allow gender to be three, so it can only be one or two. And I'm saying only include modality one responses that are less than five, which will include our other and nuns. And again, this is just to keep things simple. You can include everything if you want. So I'm gonna click continue and I'm gonna click okay. And again, if you don't recall how to do the select case tool, there's another video I can point to down below. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and run my crosstab. Crosstab is under analyze, descriptives, crosstabs. A couple of things to point out here. There's a rows and a columns feature. You can have more than one variable in each of those, and it'll just create multiple sets of crosstabs. Again, to keep things simple, I'm just gonna have one crosstab. It also really doesn't matter what you put into rows versus columns, it's completely symmetrical. It's just gonna pivot the table one way or another. So you can put whatever you want in either of those two boxes, so long as there's something in each of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take modality one and put it into my rows, and I'm gonna find gender by hitting G, and I'm gonna put that into columns. I will ask for a few options. Under statistics, I always make sure to ask for the chi-square test. This is actually gonna tell us if there's any difference in the composition of those two variables as they relate to one another. There are plenty of reasons to check some of these other options, but they're pretty unusual, so I'm not going to be including them in this video. If that's something you wanna know more about, please leave a comment below and I'll make sure to create a video for that. In any case, I click continue. Under cells, I'm gonna ask for a few things. I'm gonna ask for the expected count, which is gonna tell me what would be expected if there were no association between these two variables. I'm gonna ask for the row and column percentages because I actually like to make sure I can look at this from both directions. And then critically, I'm gonna ask for the adjusted standardized residuals. This is gonna give me a sense if the value in a particular box in my crosstab, which you'll see in a second, deviates from what we'd expect it to if there were no association. The rest I can actually leave as it is. So I click continue and I click okay and I get my result. So first, as always, we see the number of cases. There's only 991 because I've excluded those folks who either said other for gender or other or none for modality one. That's just our nine people, but we still have almost everybody in our data set. I'm gonna skip over the crosstab itself and I'm gonna look down here at this chi-square test. The most relevant thing to look at here is that first row, the Pearson chi-square test. What this is, is a test of association between these two variables. In this particular example, we can think of it as, is the ratio of male to female respondents the same regardless of whether they used a tablet or smartphone or TV or computer to watch YouTube, uh, or are those different? And if I have a significant result here, if that value is less than 0.05, I can reject the null hypothesis that there is no association, and instead it sounds like there might be a difference in ratio of male to female across these different modalities. To understand what that is though, we have to take a look at our table. So we're gonna start really simple to unpack this table. First, we're gonna look at the outside values, the totals, sometimes called the marginal values. What these are, are the representations of each of those values, ignoring the other variable. So what do I mean by that? For the variable modality, there were 342 people who said they used a computer. That represents 34.5% of all of our responses within this data set. Another 70 people said they used tablets, which represents 7.1%. Another 436 said they used smartphones, which is 44%. Another 143 used TVs, which is 14.4%. And here's our total, 991 people like we saw above, which is 100%. Looking at the other variable, male versus female gender, we see that there were 360 male respondents or 36.3% of all of our responses. And there were 631 female responses or 63.7%. 
This tells us nothing yet about whether there's a dependency or relationship between our two variables, but it gives us a description of what these variables are comprised of. So now we get to the interesting piece, which is, is there a dependency? Meaning, is there a difference in the ratio of male to female responses as a function of whether they use computers, tablets, smartphones, or TVs? To do that, we look at each of these cells separately. Here's one cell. What this cell is telling us is that if we did not have an association, we would expect, based on the ratio of males and the ratio of people using computers, to see 124.2 observations in this box right here. But we see more. We see 148. In fact, we can say that we see significantly more because our adjusted residual is above the conventional cutoff of 2.0. That's the cutoff we tend to use to claim statistical significance. It's actually just a rounding of 1.96, which might sound familiar to you if you know your normal distribution. More precisely, the way to think about this is that overall, there were 34.5% of people who use computer. But when we look within the category of male, 41.1% of them used computers. That's more than our 34.5%. And so because this adjusted residual is above two, we say that there's significantly more males using computers than we would have expected if there was no dependency between computers and modality. And it turns out that the opposite is true for females. That negative residual says that that 30.7% is significantly less than this 34.5%. Looking at tablets, by the way, we see there's really nothing going on. Those adjusted residuals are either below two or above negative two, and so there's really no deviation, meaning 8.3% is not statistically differentiable from 7.1%, the overall value, and 6.3% again is not differentiable from the overall value of 7.1%. For smartphones, we again see a pretty big difference. Males had 36.1% of them using smartphones, which is considerably less than our 44%, and we see that our adjusted residual is less than negative two. And for females, 48.5% of them used smartphones, which is more than our 44%, and again, significantly so, because we see that our adjusted residual is above 2.0. And finally, for TV, there's absolutely no difference. It's actually strikingly no difference. We saw that 14.4% of all the people that we sampled use television to watch YouTube, and that's actually the exact ratio for males and females as well. So really nothing going on there. If I had to summarize this result, I'd say that males are more likely to use computers, and females are more likely to use smartphones. So that's how we do a crosstab. And at this point, I think it'd be a good idea for you to pause the video and try this for yourself. In particular, what I'd like you to look at is not modality relative to gender, but rather modality relative to political identification. So I'll pop over here. We have a variable called poll ID, which is political identification. And that is categorized as Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, and other. And we'll just leave them all in place as is. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video, give that a try, and I'll show you what it looks like when you're done. Okay, so let's give this a try. We're gonna go back up to Analyze, Descriptives, Crosstabs. I'm gonna take Gender out of here, and I'm gonna replace it with Political ID. I'll leave all my other options intact, but just to remind you, under Statistics, I keep Chi-squared. Under Cells, I keep the Expected, Row, and Column percentages, and the Adjusted Standardized Residual. And I click OK. There's a lot more going on here, partly because there are many more values and levels to Political ID than there were for Gender, but, if we look at our chi-square table down here, there's actually no dependency. The Pearson chi-squared is not statistically significant, it is above 0.05, so we cannot reject the null hypothesis that there's no dependency between these two, meaning that the use of different modalities does not significantly differ as a function of political ideology. But let's take a look at this anyway. So this right column right here is exactly the same as we saw before, it's just the total values for our different modalities. Right down here is the percentages representing each of these political IDs. So we had 24.9% Republican, 41% Democrat, 27% Independent, 3.4% Libertarian, and 3.5% Other. And if we note inside the boxes, inside these values, none of those deviate from what we would expect. Not significantly so, anyway. So for instance, if there were 34.5% people who used computer, none of these values here, even though they look like they might differ, do not significantly differ from that 34.5%. The same is true for this 7.1% going across, or this 44% going across, or this 14.4% going across. It's worth pointing out we can do the exact same thing looking the other direction. For example, there were 24.9% Republicans. Well, that ratio is maintained, whether it's TV, which is similar, or smartphone, which is similar, or tablets, which is similar, or computers, which is similar. The point is, there is no dependency in this particular case. The ratio of political ideology does not differ as a function of what type of device people use to watch YouTube. Crosstabs is a very powerful tool for comparing categorical variables, and I hope you understand it better now. That's it for this video. 
I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.